Hello everyone, I am Suhas Dikshit, CEO of AP Chemi. I would like to thank team of SPE and Polymer Update for having me as a speaker at Race Europe. This presentation is about de-bottlenecking pyrolysis based circularity of post-consumer and landfill plastic waste. Uh, we'll be focusing mainly on polyethylene and polypropylene circularity. So let's dive right into it. To set the context, I would like to uh, go through a couple of slides about AP Chemi. We are leaders in pyrolysis with over 47 pyrolysis plants supplied since 2007. We have 12 patents in the domain of plastic waste pyrolysis as well as oil purification. And we are developing our own uh, 50 tons per day plastic waste to chemicals plant near Mumbai. Our global clients include uh, petrochemical companies, FMCG companies, packaging, engineering, and pyrolysis companies from Europe, UK, North America, Middle East, Africa, and Asia. We have research collaborations with uh, Teesside University and uh, Institute of Chemical Technology. And we are supported by ecosystems of uh, Royal Dutch Shell, Alliance to End Plastic Waste, uh, Plug and Play, as well as KPMG. Let's look at some of the legislations that are promoting plastic recycling. The key legislations that promote plastic recycling are extended producer responsibility, which has already been adopted by most of the countries ac across the world. And more and more countries are uh, also adopting extended producer responsibility. Uh, legislations around plastic tax are adding even more accountability towards plastic risk. Uh, recycling. Since Jan 2021, Europe has been imposing plastic tax of uh, 800 euro per ton. And from April 2022, uh, the UK will impose 200 pounds per ton as plastic tax. Additionally, since April 2021, plastic has been classified as toxic waste in Canada. And Europe is raising the bar for plastic circularity targets from current 25% to 50% in 2020 to 55% by 2030. Over next few years, uh, similar legislations around plastic tax and circularity targets will be replicated across the world. More than 91% of plastic waste generated today is mechanically non-recyclable. Even after plastic waste is uh, mechanically recycled, mechanically non-recyclable plastic waste is generated, uh, which is currently going to burning or landfill with a uh, huge footprint. Mechanical recycling alone cannot solve the problem hence chemical recycling is absolutely inevitable from the time we started using plastics approximately 6.3 billion tons of plastic waste has been produced uh, of which around 79% uh, or say around 5 billion tons has accumulated in landfills or natural environment 12% has been incinerated and 9% has been uh, recycled and out of this 6.3 billion tons less than 1% of plastic has ever been recycled more than once so the plastic circularity rates since the beginning of plastics is right now less than 1% Shell, ExxonMobil, BASF, Sabic and CPChem are few of the leading pet chem giants who have publicly announced their chemical recycling ambitions by 2030, five of them put together may chemically recycle 10 million tons of plastic waste uh, per annum. Plastic waste generation will increase from 330 million metric tons per year in 2022 to 440 million metric tons per year in 2030. Since mechanical recycling cannot solve the problem completely, 
plastic waste landfilling will increase from 160 million tons per year uh, in 2022 to 180 million tons per year uh, in 2030. Which means from now to 2030, uh, we will send additional 1.5 billion tons to landfill. Hence, there is a huge gap uh, between the, the chemical recycling ambitions and the quantity of plastic waste uh, that is going to landfills. Uh, it, is, it is essential uh, that all stakeholders collaborate to accelerate the chemical recycling of plastic waste. And this huge gap of 120 million tons per annum between chemical recycling and uh, uh, landfilling quantities of uh, is approximately 20% of uh, global NAFTA production. Uh, this 120 million tons per annum of uh, non-recycled plastic waste is the market opportunity to make a petrochemical operations sustainable. Uh, as part of our global expansion strategy, we are curious to build synergies with local players in each country and each city to fill this gap. Two main chemical recycling technology options are pyrolysis and gasification. Pyrolysis is simpler than gasification. Pyrolysis involves a conversion of plastic waste into pyrolysis oil followed by purification of this pyrolysis oil to remove uh, contaminants which can act as catalyst poisons uh, and can affect downstream processes. And thereafter, existing petrochemical assets can uh, convert this uh, purified oil into circular plastics. Gasification route uh, involves uh, more steps compared to pyrolysis. The end result of plastic gasification is syngas, which needs to be converted into uh, methanol or ethanol. This needs to be further chemically converted into feedstock that existing petrochemical accept, ac assets can accept. Uh, existing petrochemical assets are not designed for accepting methanol or ethanol as feedstock. So, so that's why additional step of chemical conversion is required in case of gasification. More steps in gasification means more carbon footprint compared to pyrolysis. And also compared to gasifications, uh, gasification projects of plastic waste probably there are 100 times more pyrolysis projects uh, uh, coming up compared to the gasification projects. Now, let's focus on the uh, pyrolysis-based uh, circularity of uh, post-consumer plastic waste. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have an actual photograph of European post-consumer plastic waste. And on the right-hand side is the photo of uh, chemically recycled plastic uh, which looks exactly same as conventional plastics. Uh, now let's explore the bottlenecks and solutions for pyrolysis based circularity of post-consumer uh, plastic waste. Uh, the first bottleneck is a plastic waste pre-processing. Uh, on the photo on the left hand side, uh, you can clearly see that uh, post-consumer plastic waste can have around 5% to 25% of moisture and dirt on its surface as surface contaminants. Um, these plastics have very high surface area and very low like surface area to weight ratio is very high. So because of such large surface area, a lot of dirt and a lot of moisture gets accumulated on its surface and that's not really good uh, to have as a feedstock for process like pyrolysis. Uh, for removal of moisture and dirt, Epikemi has expertise in plastic shredding, uh, if required washing and water recycling as well as drying. Drying of plastic waste can be a complicated process but, but uh, we have proven expertise in uh, rotary tunnel dryers for plastic waste. Once the plastic waste is, 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 is pre-processed to get a pyrolysis feedstock, uh, then second bottleneck is uh, 
handling the polyethylene terthalate and PVC contamination during pyrolysis. Uh, one of the key challenges in pyrolysis undoubtedly is variation in the feedstock due to unpredictable PET and PVC content. Uh, APKME's uh, PureMax uh, Pyromax technology removes uh, most of the chlorine, nitrogen, oxygen impurities. Uh, to produce higher yield uh, and better quality of uh, pyrolysis oil, Pyromax offers higher flexibility with respect to reaction time as well as reaction temperature. Our Pyromax pyrolysis technology is highly robust and scalable. Uh, our anti-coking technology minimizes char production as well as reactor coking challenges. Highly energy efficient uh, uh, Pyromax technology has a plant uptime of over 330 days per year. Once the pyrolysis oil is produced from uh, a plastic waste, the third bottleneck uh, to pyrolysis based uh, circularity is uh, impurities in the pyrolysis oil. Uh, pyrolysis oil produced from mixed plastic waste uh, where there is no uh, strict control over PVC or uh, PVDC, PET, uh, this kind of oil will always have impurities and such uh, raw pyrolysis oil uh, is purified by our PureMax technology for downstream hydrogenation. Uh, we have abilities to purify both uh, distilled as well as undistilled uh, 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 pyrolysis oil. Our patent granted uh, Pure Max uh, oil purification technology removes impurities to produce pure oil. The most critical impurity is chlorine, uh, since uh, chlorine is highly corrosive and uh, it's it's not really good for predictability of downstream processes. Um, APKME has developed game changer technology to reduce chlorine content of pyrolysis oil from 2900 ppm to less than 50 ppm. So we took Mumbai's post consumer plastic waste, converted it into oil and then uh, from that plastic waste we, we got uh, a pyrolysis oil with 2900 ppm of chlorine. Uh, and then uh, we developed the technology to get that chlorine content to less than 50 ppm so that that uh, oil becomes usable. In addition to chlorine removal, our technology can also remove impurities of oxygen, nitrogen, silica, asphalt, heavy metal, and all. Uh, the fourth bottleneck is high olefins in pyrolysis oil. So, for example, when you uh, when you take polymer and you break this uh, bigger molecule to make smaller molecules of oil. Uh, the point at which the molecule breaks, there you get double bonds. And then that's why there are very high content of olefins in, in pyrolysis oil. And to, to get rid of olefins and aromatics, hydrogenation is necessary. Um, even after removal of impurities, pure oil has olefins and aromatics. And as a final step, hydrogenation converts this pure oil into circular naphtha or circular crude by increasing the paraffins to uh, more than 70% or more than 95% and reducing the olefins to less than 5% uh, which is quite essential for, for the, uh, uh, having circular naphtha or circular crude um, to produce circular economy plastics. Our technology partners can help produce circular naphtha or circular crude from pure oil. Uh, this is how the the circular naphtha or circular crude looks like circular naphtha uh, looks absolutely transparent like this and circular crude is slightly yellow um, uh, this is how it, the pyrolysis oil uh, light and middle fraction looks after uh, hydrogenation uh, the the Fifth uh, bottleneck to plastic circularity is uh, shortage of this circular naphtha and circular crude. Uh, this uh, final uh, final bottleneck of uh, shortage of uh, naphtha and crude is being addressed through um, scale up and collaboration. Uh, each uh, uh, steam cracker that can take either circular naphtha or circular crude. Uh, 
can probably accept pyrolysis oil from 30 to 70 different pyrolysis plants. So there's going to be one major cracker supplied with 30 to 70 uh, 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 pyrolysis plants and purification facilities. Uh, so that's why this bottleneck is being addressed through collaborations between local players, technology providers and pet chem companies. Epikemi has end-to-end -end expertise in producing high-quality liquids from post-consumer plastic waste, starting from plastic shredding, uh, washing, drying, uh, plastic segregation before that, uh, followed by uh, uh, pyrolysis as well as oil purification. Uh, we continue to develop technology, engineer projects, uh, manufacture machinery as well as install, commission and operate plants. Uh, in case plants need to be deployed in certain regions of Europe, we can onboard European engineers onto our team to ensure that uh, there is compliance to the local codes and standards and emission norms. Um, since 2007, uh, we have combined experience of 132 years in pyrolysis. Our plants have processed 179 million kilograms of plastic waste over 1.3 billion hours of uh, plant operation. As next steps, uh, APKME would be glad to have a brainstorming chat to explore synergies. Uh, additionally, uh, in APKME's R&D facility, you can check what quality and quantity of oil can be produced using your raw material and our technologies. Uh, if you are already producing pyrolysis oil, uh, we can conduct pilot studies to check how AP Chemi can upgrade the quality of your pyrolysis oil. We also would be very interested in uh, working on uh, collaborating and working on opportunity approach paper to help you maximize the impact of your plastic recycling project. Thank you. Thank you.